Hello, everybody, and welcome back uh, to your Mind Body Wellness program. I'm Petia. I'm your guide through this journey. And thank you so much for coming back and for being here and for staying in the room and for really just making yourself a priority in a way that you are committed to grow and to understand uh, and to change. Uh, because as we know, change is really constant. It doesn't stop. And if we don't consciously go with the pace of change, then we tend to get stuck and not feel good and come up with all kinds of excuses as to why that is. But really, it's just the, the ability or the commitment to stay consistent uh, with your changing life. Change happens all the time. In fact, right now is a beautiful time to embrace new stuff. Um, any change of season, I mean, Mother Nature knows how to do this on her own. Any change of season is a great time to really dive in and really uh, focus on yourself in a way that serves you in a way that is supportive of your goals and your dreams and yourself and so i'm here to guide you through this this is our third um and final online session um through the process and today we're going to talk all about action so thank you again so much for being here i see some beautiful faces on the call and these calls are recorded live um, for your convenience. And so as far as any questions, please pop them in the chat box um, below or just email privately. As you know, you have access to me through this program and I'm here to help you to um, help you reach a new level of understanding for yourself and help you raise some of your vibration that may be stuck. Now, as you know, there are steps be before action can be taken, but today I want to focus a little bit more on um, taking inspired action and what that looks like. So I'm going to jump over to um, the slides here for a few moments. And uh, with that, we'll go on and continue to talk about the process of change and how our minds and bodies are connected and how we can continuously um, choose change consciously and how that would bring us to a place of really um, feeling in control of your experience in your life. All right, so welcome again to your seven week mind body wellness program. And I'm Petia. I'm the creator of this program. And I've created this program as a continuous continuation support um, for my clients that do body work and that focus on the body as that tool for clarity. Thank you again for being here. At this point, you may be eager for the next step. As we said, we're going to take this journey step by step. Um, and I'd like to honor your commitment to yourself. And I'd like you to honor this commitment to yourself, even if you haven't been fully committed yet. It's okay. Just the fact that you're hearing this right now shows that you have commitment to feel better, to act better, and to be better in your life. So congratulations. Take a moment and feel that. It's really important. Perhaps at this point you have some questions, like some things have come up and you have become aware of a few things. Perhaps you've worked on um, accepting some of the situations in your life and uh, reaching for forgiveness. And maybe you have questions, maybe you feel stuck, and so we're here. So I'm here to help. Please feel free to ask those questions. There is no silly question, um, no matter how it feels to you. Um, chances are if you have questions around your personal development and your thoughts and your feelings and your body, your friends do too. Other people in this program do too. And it's only serving you and everybody else to ask your questions. And I want to ask you here, do you understand the process so far? Uh, today, I'm going to recap it again and just sort of share, even share some personal um, experience and some personal ways that I go through through this process because I, too, apply this to every area of my life. It, um, it only makes sense for me to do that as well. So um, that's perfect. 
So I want to know, what is your biggest takeaway so far in the program? So please feel free, type some uh, comments um, in the chat box and let me know what is your biggest takeaway um, to this day. Maybe you're more aware of your day-to-day -day experiences. Perhaps you've become to know certain feelings and repetitive patterns that come on um, for you in your life. Um, maybe you have more patience with yourself now that you know it's a process and you don't have to get um, anxious and agitated every time you become aware of something because as we know awareness was just the first step and that is a step that is absolutely necessary and as soon as we can become aware of a thought or a pattern that's where the commitment to change is so important right because just being aware of something can keep you stuck there and if you're aware of it and not taking any further action or steps to continue working with this, especially if it's not feeling well, then, you know, that can create frustration. So I wonder, how are you taking this process? Are you being more kind to yourself? Um, maybe it feels really uncomfortable still. Maybe you're in the state of, oh my goodness, there's so much to be aware of and I just really don't know what to do with all of this. All of that is okay. All of that is totally okay. Please feel, feel free to give yourself permission to feel uncomfortable. Okay. Feeling uncomfortable doesn't have to stay, doesn't have to last. We don't have to live there, but feeling uncomfortable is so necessary if you want to achieve change. In fact, feeling uncomfortable means you're stretching, you're growing, you're moving, you're accessing ideas and points that don't feel comfortable, recognizing old patterns that may make you cry. Again, I'm going to share something a little later um, to, uh, to show you how I'm moving through um, something very personal in my life right now um, using this process. And for me, it's working on that something very specific. Do you have something specific that's come up and you're working on in that same way? I'd love to know. And again, my role in your journey here is to help spark this awareness, is to uh, be that mirror for you so that you can look in and reflect the things that need to be worked on. Remember, any time you look at another person for validation or anything that is something that you need to give yourself, you will be triggered, right? Anytime you look at someone who has something and you don't, you will be triggered. And those are just mirrors for you to understand what it is that you need to focus on and work on. So none of it is bad. I mean, it doesn't feel comfortable, but again, it's necessary. I'm also here to hold space for your healing journey. I'm here to support you and to create a non-judgmental, absolutely free of any kind of judgment space. And to infuse that space with compassion, understanding, love, forgiveness, because we all need that. So my work, my role in your journey is to be um, someone that you can learn from how to do this for yourself. That is my, my mission, that is my intention for me being a part of this journey for you. I'm here to support you, I'm here to guide you, I'm here to give you perspective. What I'm not here to do is solve your problems because guess what? I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I only know how to focus on me in that way. And what I can do for you is show you, guide you, teach you, support you, in learning how to do that for yourself. That's it. I, I you know, want to make sure that you understand no one, me, your family, friends, no one can solve the problems for you. Okay? So let's take a big breath here and just come back to understanding, you know, what it is that you want out of this or what it is that you are currently present to in your life that needs to be addressed, that needs to be changed. How do I know if this is going to work for me? 
how do I know that this process is actually going to work for me? Currently, you know, I feel like, yeah, some things are there, I'm aware, but I'm not exactly where I want to be yet. So how do I know that this will work for me? And I'll come back to, again, taking responsibility yourself and committing to your journey, committing to this way of life. I personally made this commitment a long time ago when I said, I'm no longer willing to feel bad. I'm not willing to live my life feeling like this. And that was my commitment to myself. That was my commitment to my life. I understand that I am the creator of what I'm experiencing. And everything else that's happened that is happening in my life are just kind of reflections to show me what I am, where my level of awareness is, where my level of vibration is. What are the words that I'm using to describe my situations? And what am I attracting more of? And this is how you know it will work for you, is when you seriously commit to your own journey, to your own life, to your own family, to your own goals, and stick with them, right? There is no exam for this. Your exam is your life. So how will you know if this is working for you is by the way you're feeling and the things you're living, right? Simple way to know if this is working is how you feel and what's showing up in your experience. And if it's something wanted, amazing. Congratulate yourself. Celebrate yourself. And if it's not feeling good, then you know that there's some change or, or, or room for improvement needed. And that is all. You can keep tweaking as you go. Um, situations and patterns are definitely healed in layers. So just when you thought you were done with something, oh, that might come back, right back around in a totally different situation, same feeling, for you to practice that changed pattern again. So let's go over the change formula, formula again really quickly to remind you First step is awareness. I'm aware that something happened. Second step, accepting the situation as it is and practicing forgiveness for yourself, for the situation, for others involved, for what did or didn't happen. And the third step is action. Now that I know I'm aware of something, I work to accept and forgive, now what do I need to do? Because that's where change will be sustainable. Right? Without the piece of action, you are right back to awareness or right back to acceptance and not quite at change. I hope that makes sense for you. So awareness plus acceptance plus action equals change. And today I want to talk about action. And first, let me go ahead and actually share a brief story that or a brief something that I'm currently applying this process to. I will share this with you as my private, intimate community of uh, people that I work with. So if you uh, tuned into the last, um, last week's lesson on acceptance and forgiveness, I shared a story, a personal story about my father and uh, some things that were coming up around our upcoming trip um, to Europe to go visit my family. So what's happened is since then um, is a whole bunch of, again, awareness and pattern clearing. Okay, so, so where I'm sitting today with that is at the stage of action. I'm really about to make long lasting change to a pattern, to something that was ingrained and I really believed on a deep level and that was running my you know subconscious mind was running and it was actually showing up in so many different areas of my life including my finances and my business and again this is something to do with an old story that I've heard and it's to do with my father so if you remember some of the stories I shared my, my dad wanted said he wanted to help us out financially for our trip. And up until now, my father has never been um, able to financially support me 
growing up. And so my whole life, I heard this, this statement, and rightfully so, but my mom would tell me, your father never sends money for you. Your father hasn't given you a dollar. You know, your father doesn't care about you. He doesn't have to send money for you. Um, and I could feel the bitterness behind that. Of course she was bitter. She didn't get any help, right? And this is my perspective now. I'm able to look back at that and, and see and understand that those words that I heard got so deeply ingrained in me that even without the words, I had memorized the feeling of that. And the feeling was lack. It was lack of money. It was lack of resources. It was inability to buy or get what I wanted. And that is how I was running my life up until now. Up until the time I became aware of this, which was, it's been only in the last few weeks that I've been dabbling in this idea here. Now, this is not new to me. Like I said, I've lived with it my whole life. So on different levels, I've tried to work on it trying to understand that I don't need that money, that I will be okay, that I'm provided for it, and, and all those things. But on some level, that was still present. And it was showing up in my online business that I'm building and that you're part of. And as I'm building this, I'm required to step out into a new zone, something that I'm not comfortable with yet, I've never done before. And that is charge for my services online, which includes receiving money, right? Receiving of money. And again, this is about money, but you can apply this to any other area in life as well. I worked through love like this as well. And it was to do with my dad who was missing in, in the picture. And I was attracting all these unavailable men in my life at that time. So love, I feel like I got that. I have a beautiful loving husband who's there and who is exactly all the things that I thought I needed, he's there for that. And now it's showing up financially. So I'm not able to receive money. And it dawned on me when my dad said, I don't know how to send you money. I was like, wow, after 30 some years, he still doesn't know how to send me any money. Wow, how do I know this? How did I learn? that receiving money, you know, in my bank account is not possible. Well, of course it didn't happen. So why, you know, how am I struggling now to sell services online and have money in my bank account? So you see where I'm going with this? Great. And so that's what's been, what's been happening. And the, the, the pattern, the thought pattern is, your father's never sent you a dollar. Now that is exactly what I need to go and rewire. I need to tell myself that I'm worthy and that I can receive money. I need to hear the opposite, more reinforcing and more supportive statements about that. Okay, I did the acceptance part. I did the forgiveness part that I you know, didn't, don't need the cash, I will be okay, and that he has his own, you know, um, struggles and um, sorrows that he's going through, which is, for him, alcohol. He has a huge alcohol issue, and, and that's how he deals. That's not how I deal, right? And so with that awareness of, of and the connection, that only makes sense to me, guys, I'm the one who feels this, and I can tell if it's true or not. You might be hearing this and saying, yeah, whatever, it doesn't mean anything to me. It's because I'm actually the one who knows how this resonates. And the same goes for you. No one can really tell you what will resonate, but you can explore that, and by the way you feel, you'll know the truth. So to me, it feels like, yeah, that's exactly how I learned that I'm not capable of receiving finances directly into my bank account. That's how I came up with the ideas that I will be okay, but I really have to work hard for my money. That's how I came up with the ideas that it happens for other people, but it doesn't happen for me. 
you know and those are the things that i need to clarify and clear out of my subconscious i need to change in order to create a different result so i hope that makes sense for you so we'll continue going with action but i wanted to share my process because if you remember last week's um, lesson it was very fresh for me and i was upset about it and today I feel a lot more stable and grounded and knowing that I can change this. It's okay. I'm thankful that I understand and that I'm aware of this and that I have the tools to actually keep going and, and changing and growing and stretching. Okay. So action, what am I going to do with this now that I know all these things, right? <clears throat> So action uh, is the third step in this process, uh, the process of change. And action is defined as the fact or process of doing something typically to achieve an aim or a goal. Or the manner of style or style of doing something typically the way in which a person moves. So something you're doing, something you're um, acting to achieve a goal or an aim. Action is definitely a necessary part of this process because actions is what actually leads to a new reaction and a new reaction will lead to a new result, right? So action, different reaction, new result. Now inspired action is absolutely key. We'll talk a little bit more about inspired action in a moment because acting from a place of non-alignment is wasting your time Okay, so let me say that again. Action, just for the sake of acting or doing something, or meaning I'm just going to do, 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 do this. I'm just going to so hard, like, just do this so I can change it. Unless you're in alignment with this action, unless it feels in alignment with you and what your life and goals and vision are, it's not going to work. Okay, so inspired action. And we'll talk about how to get to that inspired place and act from there. Journaling is a beautiful form of action. Just writing down thoughts, just writing down ideas, just asking in a written form, you know, on what needs to be done, on what is the next step. And I love that question in my journal. What is the next step now? Please guide me. I'm open to the next step. I need to now understand what I need to do next. I'm here. I don't know what I'm doing next, but I'm, I'm open to finding out. And so journaling like that is beautiful as well. Visualization, that's a form of action. Sitting in a quiet space and, and envisioning the goal or the future or the um, thing that you want to see happen. Staying aware of your emotions and working on your emotional guidance system. Beautiful form of action, right? And what are some other examples that you can think of that could be a form of action, that you can take action when we talk about feelings and beliefs and change? Well, communication is a beautiful form of action, right? Speaking up for yourself communicating that which is no longer serving you if you need to communicating it to yourself to your loved one to the person if that's necessary sometimes it's not necessary but communicating your state of being and what you'd like and using words to to putting words to your feelings is absolutely a form of action words are so powerful that's why communication is key. This is why communication is one of the main, if not the main pillar in any relationship you have. Learning how to stay grounded in yourself, in your experience, in your life, that's a form of action. That's taking action every day. It's to learn how to stay grounded, how to stay strong, how to stay in your body course and um, another form of taking action is setting boundaries because for some their their boundaries are completely leaked you know boundaries with others with their time with um, all kinds of stuff that you can think of that you need to create boundaries around that is a form of action 
So again, in, in the process of change, as you become aware of something, you work to accept and forgive, then action is what needs to happen in order to sustain that awareness and that forgiveness and to create actual lasting change. So how do you communicate your feelings and meet your own needs, right? That is, I think that is on its own a whole other hour of a training. But the truth is learning to communicate your own feelings is how you can relate with others, is how others can actually understand you better. Now, I know for some of you what's coming up is, well, I don't want to hurt others' feelings, other people's feelings. I don't want to, uh, you know, if I speak my truth, that might start, stir a lot of, you know, stuff up for, for other people. And I might as well just keep it all in, never tell anyone, and, you know, deal with it myself. No, my friend, that is only hurting you. That is only hurting your body. We all need to communicate our feelings, good and bad. We all need to learn to say, hey, I'm owning this feeling. I am feeling this thing. And of course you want to create safe space and people that can hold that for you. So you wouldn't want to necessarily go and share your feelings with strangers, but there are people in your life who need to know how you feel. And if you don't know how to let them know how you feel, you create disconnection. You create inability to um, connect, you know, the inability to be intimate. And let's say we're talking about intimate relationship with a partner or even with your children, you know, um, with, I mean, coworkers sometimes because a lot have gets stirred up at, you know, in our work environment. And if we're not able to let other people know how we feel and what we need, that's not serving anyone, not you, not them. Holding stuff in for the sake of not trying to hurt other people's feelings is not serving anyone, you know? I mean, there are situations, and I'm sure you can come up with some in your own experience, where some, some things are just better left than said. Okay, okay, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt there. And yet I still want to say, for how long? At what point will you let, let this out? The thing that's better left than said, the thing that you're carrying inside your body, the thing that's taking space and energy within you, at what point are you going to let it out? At what point are you allow, going to allow yourself to communicate that and free yourself? You know? So consider that. Think about it. How many times, how many places in your life have you been holding on to stuff, not saying how you truly feel for the sake of not hurting other people's feelings? Well, I want to congratulate you and high five you, but at the same time, I'm sure that your body's holding tons of tension because of it. So, well, who's winning here? Yeah, take a deep breath. This is again not a judgment, this is a point for awareness. This is for you to clearly see and understand what's going on. And I am here to nudge you gently to see those things. So what are your needs? What is it that you need to do for you? And some of our tools that we've already been talking about are for action are, you know, meditation, beautiful tool for action. That even though you think sitting in meditation is not doing anything, it's doing so much. It's getting you in that alignment. It's getting you in that place of clarity. So journaling with that, that process. Inner child work, actively connecting to that part of you that needs you like a child. 
for those of you who are parents, in the same way you would attend to your child when they need you, you need to figure out and learn how to do this for yourself. It's not a negotiable. And unfortunately, that's what we didn't learn in school. They didn't teach us how to do that very well. And now is the time. And it's also time to mirror that to your children. Them seeing you know how to meet your own needs. It is so inspiring. It is such a way to lead and teach your children, you know, a way of, a way of life. Staying aware of your emotions and feelings is beautiful. And so here's the emotional guidance system again. That emotional intelligence that I talk about is based on knowing that emotions are vibration. They are energy. And it's all a spiral. So take a look at this uh, image on, on the screen. And really just take a moment to check it out. Right? See the spiral, the upward and downward spiral. And there's sort of a midpoint. And our work or the, the place where action takes place, this is where action is really, really beautiful. Because in actively bringing yourself up from a feeling or actively changing or reaching for a different feeling, that is what creates change, right? That is how you shift your vibration, that is how you shift your thinking, you rewire your um, patterns of beliefs and behavior, right? So how do you shift from one, from how do you go from guilt or from jealousy to empowerment and love and passion? Well. To tell you the truth, you cannot do that in one step. Because you see, how do you jump a staircase from the bottom to the, the you know, climb a staircase from the bottom to step 10? Well, you have to kind of go through one, two, three, four, five. So the easiest way to do this, or the way to do this is to try to reach for the next available feeling. You see, there are words describing feelings here. Those are the major ones. Those are the main ones we can come up with and feel, right? So, so from jealousy, how do you jump over to, you know, contentment? From jealousy to just feel okay with the situation. Well, I think first you need to go to, you know, the anger piece. From jealousy to you know, I'm jealous that someone has something that I don't. To, I'm angry that I can't get what I want yet. You know, to, I'm worried that I'd never be able to get what I want yet. You know, to, I doubt that I'll I'll have this thing that I don't that I want. Now, the the piece that's important here is that's a downward spiral. In order to reach a higher level. You have to choose words that are conducive to that vibration in a positive way. So I'm jealous that someone has something that I don't. It feels awful, kind of gut wrenching. You know, I, and how do you spin that in a positive way to go up? You know, even if you're angry, doubtful, and worried that you'll never get that, you at least know somebody who does have that. So instead of jealousy, now we're looking at it as, I think it's possible. It's not me yet, but I am observing that someone else has that. You see how that pulls away the piece about feeling like you'll never get it and that something is wrong with you? It's more about, wow, they are just demonstrating to me that what they have, I can have too. I'm just not there yet. And so all of a sudden we're at impatience. Well, when am I going to be there? When am I going to be there? You know, when is this going to happen? How long is it going to take? Now you're irritated that it still hasn't gotten there, but you're thinking it's possible. You see, it's coming up. And then 
one day maybe I will do some things or maybe I'll find out how they did it or what the process was. Now that's a positive expectation. Well, it's not there for me right now, but I will definitely have it at some point. Contentment. I believe that this is possible for me now. And remember where we started? We were jealous. Jealousy that someone has something you don't. And through this spiral system, this emotional guidance system, choosing your words and talking yourself upward towards that which you want to feel will help you get there. Words are powerful. So think of this spiral the next time you can identify a feeling, right? The ultimate goal is to feel compassion, joy, love, you know, empowerment all the time. But that's not possible. Come on. We live in, in this life. So you will feel good, guilty, jealous. All these things are human emotions. The interesting part is let's learn to climb up that scale faster than as, as soon as possible right vibration is before comes before manifestation so in order to see actually something happen physically you need to know how to line up with the vibration of it so physical symptoms show up very last so pain is a symptom symptom and it shows up very last before that it means that something's been going on in your mind and your heart in your spirit that has been giving you messages and maybe you haven't listened and now what's happened is basically your body is showing you the symptom so recognizing the energy of a feeling will help you shift or change it and that's where awareness is so key awareness knowing how to recognize how you feel right how am i feeling and then having these tools will help you to move and shift from that feeling into change. So learn the spectrum of vibration. Have something like this. This chart is easily reachable on like search engines, Google. Google it up. Check it out. Emotional guidance system. So much information on that out there. And um, of course, I can help you personally identify something and help you shift from one thing to the next that's my specialty <laughs> so ask me please if you have something more specific go ahead and ask for it so inspired action is simply action from a place of alignment okay so lining up the vibration with that which you want so let's say you're not there yet you want to feel you want to feel free and inspired and confident and like you can do the things you want to do in your life and be free and happy, but you're not there yet. Okay. But that's what you want to feel. So finding ways to line up with that feeling first vibrationally and then taking action. So whatever that means, what does this mean? Do I need to, um, write an email? Do I need to make a phone call? Do I need to quit my job? Do I need to find another job? Do I need to speak with someone? From a place of alignment of that which you want is called inspired action. If you are just writing the long to-do list just because you feel you have to be doing something and pushing forward and just have to do the, the have to's, have to's, have to's, you are acting from a place of force and that feels like so much effort and that feels like it's so tiring at the end of the day. Inspired action is not tiring. Inspired action is inspiring. Okay. Yeah. So consider that please. How do we, when do we act? When do we take action and notice the place of feeling? If you're feeling awful, if you're still feeling very jealous, don't make that phone call. It's going to sound like you're jealous. If you, you know, are able to shift from someone has something I don't and I really want it and you're able to shift to hopefulness, I could have it too. Now I'm interested to know how they did it. And you take action to maybe connect with them and say, 
um, ask a couple questions or just even congratulate them, that creates ripple effects for you. That opens you up to the possibilities. But if you're jealous being like, why do they get to have it and I don't? Guess what? If you reach out in that state and even say congratulations from a place of jealousy, it's going to show off, show up. So, so consider that. Just be, be very mindful of what place are you acting from. Okay, so this whole idea of taking action, it has to be inspired action. It has to be coming from a place of love and acceptance and kindness and, and forgiveness. Okay? And that's why the preceding step before action is exactly that. And here's a great um, little photo and quote. Action is what you do when you are aware and accept something as it is. Right? And a lot of times this is maybe changing your perspective on action because a lot of times we think we have to do stuff just to be doing stuff, to keep busy. Well, I think it's fair to say that taking, taking action from a place of inspired, connected being will reap amazing results, so much more than if you're just doing things, just, just to be doing. So how is that information sitting with you? How are you taking in these, um, these steps, this way of action? There's a lot of information to consider, and I invite you right now to jot down a couple of notes on what, what, what is it that you want to take action? What are you ready for? You know, what have you been practicing your awareness and acceptance around, and now you're ready to take some inspired action? Um, also, don't forget to download your um, guide page, your workbook for this um, lesson with some provoking questions, thought-provoking questions for you to uh, consider and what would be something immediately you can take action on today you know what what would make your situation feel slightly better and again now this is an important note because if you are um, feeling in a low vibrational state you're not ready to take action okay so it's maybe about time to go back and reconsider how you can change and shift your vibration about the situation first and then go for it. So um, my action step is to actually practice my, um, my love and acceptance with my father, you know, to continue um, to continue to work on my own feeling to raise this vibration about this old pattern of my inability to receive. And so my action step was, so one of the things I resisted because of this belief that was so in the back of my mind running the show was I had resisted putting up my services on my website so people can buy them. So you know of this because you've seen me personally, face to face. But I had never created something that people who don't see me face to face can engage in my work in this way online so that I can be, you know, compensated for my time and services, but also to continue to do what I do. And it's, so the action I took the other day after realizing this is I put it up on the website and I created a button where people can click and then go through PayPal and offer a payment. And so that is my action. And this again is a situation very personal to me and I'm sure you have your own things that are coming up. I just want you to consider what are the things that have been lingering that you've put away and not took action on for the fear of hurting someone showing up as inauthentic or you know misunderstood or or whatever have you and yeah what it what are those things in your life where are you ready to actually shift things and in my case in this scenario that i'm sharing here with um 
my father and my business and my ability to receive money and that's really huge for me that is so deep right for me that is huge i mean i don't know if you get the sense of it but i have shifted i have shifted my awareness and my capacity to receive now because of that awareness because of that situation that i didn't even consider that that's where it's coming from and what i had to do was literally go in with an openness but very focused on recognizing what it is that I need to do. What is it that I need to um, do if I want to shift this? And I'm shifting it not only for myself, for my family, for my children, for the generations ahead because we're not going to keep spreading this message of you're not good enough to receive money. You know, we're going to stop now. And um, I ask you, I ask you, what's going on in your life that you are like, we don't want to spread this message anymore. We don't want to continue saying things just for the sake of them being said like that. You know, what are these repetitive thoughts and patterns that keep coming up for you? That's the stuff you have control over changing. And... I'm so grateful and I'm so thankful um, to you for being there and for staying, you know, staying in this room and for your willingness and openness to dive in deeper. So let me check if there is a couple of things that I can answer right now. And again, uh, we're almost there at 10 o'clock and I would encourage you to check it out, go through the workbook and let me know, let me know what's coming up for you because it's this is how I'm here I'm here to help you and this is how I can help you is by knowing what it is that you're facing and struggling with and and again it's right back on you it's when you're ready okay so no pressure but when you're ready um let's see here in the chat box Yeah, people are saying that that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And no one's really opening up to share a very specific personal experience. Uh, I have a couple of private messages that um, maybe I'll address it another time. Um, but so, so what I want to leave you here with is this. You are the creator of your own reality. You have control over how you feel and you can create change. One of the hardest things to do is to become aware of old patterns and old programming that is running the system in the background, your system. Your brain is just a transmitter of the mind. Your brain is an organ of the mind. Your brain transmits and directs the information through your body. So your body is this tool that helps you understand or connect or become aware of those innermost, deeper truths that you hold about yourself. A lot of times those are told to us, okay? They are learned. And a lot of times we live life from that place. And a lot of times life can go on for years and years until we come to know if that's still working or not. I want to encourage you to stay present to the words that come to mind to describe your feelings. Stay present to how you describe your situation to others. Stay present to how, what kind of phrases and sentences you use because your words are so powerful. And I want to encourage you to really dive so deep into understanding how you learn those words because that's where the true magic happens. That's where you can shift. That's where you can move. I also want to encourage you to get to know your emotions, get to know your emotional guidance system. Your feelings are indicators 
they are there for you to get to know more about you. They're not there to hurt your feelings. Your feelings are not there to hurt your feelings. Did you hear that? And so let's let's liberate ourselves from these heavy oars and these heavy chains that we've literally chained ourselves with and these boxes and fences we like drew around ourselves and kept ourselves stuck in them. Let's just move past that. You have that capacity. And I talk about my father and my money story um, lately with you guys because that's what's relevant for me right now. That's the real thing that I'm going through right now. And I'm owning it. I am not sitting here in sorrow about it. I mean, sadness has come up for sure. And not to mention he is not doing well. He's still a heavy drinker and not even a drinker. He is literally using alcohol to sabotage himself and his life. But that's not me, right? And I don't have to take that on. And so I encourage you to to do the same. I encourage you to take responsibility and I'm here for you. So anything you need, anything you need support with, anything you need um, helpful hand with, anytime you need to raise that vibration and feel something different, I'm here for you. So reach out. I am thankful for you. I absolutely love working in this capacity with you guys and sharing this kind of information because I think it's it's timeless, it is so needed, and it's not talked about enough out there in the world. So I hope you take what you can. I hope this serves you in many ways, and I hope to see you soon. Take care for now. Bye-bye.